Hello, Barry Winbolt here. I met a man recently who I've been dying to talk to for quite a long time. I've been following his Just Say Hello project on Facebook, and I've had this idea floating around in my head for months. It's called Ordinary People Who Do Extraordinary Things, and I thought it'd be good to build a, a series for the podcast around that idea. And I thought this chap, Duncan is his name, uh, is definitely in that category. Now I've spoken to him, I realised that I was wrong. This is no ordinary person. In fact, he's an extraordinarily gifted communicator and an entertaining and all-round remarkable human being. He's one of those very rare people who have chosen to make his mission to encourage the rest of us to engage with one another. And he seems to be living his life entirely according to his beliefs. But that's all for now. I'll come back to Duncan and the incredible work he's doing in a later episode. This certainly isn't the last conversation I had with him. And in fact, what you're about to hear is a spontaneous recording made on his iPhone as we spoke. Listen now to how a former celebrity photographer spent a day with one of the most iconic figures in contemporary music and judge for yourself. I'm really interested to know how did you get... To, I know you've photographed lots of celebrities, but I think there was a particular story associated with Lionel Richie. Yeah. OK, so how did I meet Lionel Richie? Well, um, yeah, in, I, I, basically, I, I went to meet a, a PR friend of mine in a calf. And we're sitting in this calf, and she turns up, and she's one of them girls, and she's got all blonde hair, bouncy blonde hair. She sort of looked after everybody and stuff. And I said, you all right, Karen? She said, oh, no, I'm so stressed. I'm so stressed. You know, I, I, I'm, I've got this, I've got that, I've got TV, I've got, um, I look after Woody. Um, um, I said, well, girl, you know, life's not too bad. She said, yes, but I've got Lionel Richie coming in. Um, next, she had Lionel Richie coming in, into London for a week, 10 days, on the Monday. This was on a Wednesday. And so I said, oh, well, that'd be good fun. She says, no, no, he was going to come in three weeks. They brought the tour forward. He can't go to Belgium or something. Or so he's coming on Monday. So, yeah, I'm in a bit, I'm a bit stressed. I said, oh, it'd be good fun, wouldn't it? She says, yeah, but it's not because the manager said he's got a day off, uh, you know, next week. And I've got, we, we've got to organise something for him. Go entertain him. You've got to entertain yeah. I said, oh, I said, well, we're in a greasy spoon cafe. I bet he'd love to come here, have a nice fry up, meet some plumbers. And <laughs> she goes... Duncan, stop fucking about, you stupid idiot. She goes, she goes um, yeah, there's this, you know, Duncan, stupid. So anyway, and I said, but hold on. If I could take him out for a whole day, I could take him for a greasy spoon breakfast and just photograph him, like, fly on the wall, like they did in the 30s and 40s, and just try and capture the man behind the showbiz, you know, do something off the wall. She goes, Duncan, if you think Lionel Richie is actually going to let you take him out for a day, your pigs can fly... I said, all right, then. Then we just carried on chatting from the rear. And when she got up, I said, don't forget that thing about Lionel Richie. Speak to Barry, his manager. And she says, Duncan, as if I'm going to bother that. So then she goes, right? And that was on a Wednesday. And on a Saturday night, my mobile went, right? And I was in a pub. I had a couple of pints. There's a guy goes, is that Duncan Rayban? I said, it's a Barry Marshall here. I look after um, Lionel Richie. I said, oh, I, said, I thought it was a wind-up, right? He said, yeah, yeah, I, we've spoken to, but Caroline mentioned this going to a greasy spoon calf idea. With Lionel. I talked to Lionel, he loves the idea. So are you around Monday morning? <laughs> and I saw, anyway, then I thought, oh, crikey, yeah, uh, a day with Lionel. Uh. Um, he said, yeah, so if you could, so what you'd have to do is be at the hotel, it's at the Connaught on the river, at 7.30, he's always up early, 7.30 Monday, You've got the whole day with Lionel, just you, sort of. So then on the Sunday morning, I'm, I'm thinking, God, where shall I take him? So I'm driving around London trying to find greasy spoon calves that, quite, that might be quite near the hotel, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Didn't really find anything. Then I went up this sort of row of terraced houses from Back Street in Fulham, and there's these calf sitting there. It almost looks like it's going to collapse into the ground. <laughs> you know, got neck curtains. It's really grim looking. And I look through the window. It's shut. But I could see all this handwriting on the wall. It felt in, you know, chalk and stuff. You know, egg chips, beans, egg chips, beans, 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 beans. 
oh god yeah maybe i could bring lana ritchie here so it's about a mile from the hotel anyway then then the, then the sat, sat, the monday morning i turn up at the hotel it's about seven o'clock in the morning i'm a bit nervous you know i was, was I, you know to, to go and knock on lana ritchie's door and i was still wondering if it's a wind up you know but yeah. anyway so I mean, I, there was nobody sort of chaperoning you no. you weren't sort of taken by his agent no. you just had to pitch up and do yeah this place. unusual yeah unusual yeah. really but trusting um, trusting yeah so i get in a lift and i go up to this this suite and i knock on a I, that's right, I stood out there for about two minutes, quite nervous. Is, is Lionel Richard behind that door? And uh, I knocked on the door after about two minutes. And uh, there's no answer, you know. So I'm wandering around this corridor. So oh, I said, it is, it's, it's, someone's playing a prank. I'm always playing pranks on people. Someone's playing a prank, a wind off on me. And then I knocked on it again. Straight, the door opens. There's Lionel in a dressing gown. He goes, oh, you're Duncan, aren't you? I said, yes, yeah. Come in, he said, um, I'm just in bed, just just getting up, I'm just reading the paper, you know, he's, so he gets back in bed and he's reading the papers. Look, I've got a picture of it, look. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so here's a picture of Lionel Ritchie, naked torso, magazines and newspapers all over the bed. If I didn't know better, I think it was <laughs> not possible to take a photo like this. And you took this photo as soon as you walked into the room, you met him and... Yeah, within about... Five minutes. He gets back in bed, and I told him to take his dressing gown top off, and then just yeah took those pictures. Anyway, but he was so friendly, and um, I don't know. I was just taking pictures, started taking pictures, and he was laughing because I was because I often don't look through the viewfinder. I I, yeah. I have a camera yeah. to the side, so your your eyes are engaging with people, Absolutely. and it, and, uh, and it's all body eye contact, all that that sort of psychology stuff, or whatever, and. Um, so yeah, and then he gets out of bed, and uh, so he says, "Like I'm just going to have a shower." I said, Is that, "That's all right. I can photograph that, can't I?" I said, "You can photograph what you want, Duncan." And he says, "You, <laughs> you got me in bed, nothing on." So, so I did him in the, did him getting out of the shower, I did him shaving, and then he does all these gets his vitamin tablets, and then he's so we he spent about twenty minutes getting ready, and I'm doing different pictures of him running around this suite. And then, with, you know, I'm sitting here, with, I'm there with Lionel Richie at up past seven in the morning. And I'm thinking, God, shall I tell him we're going to go to a cafe? And he goes, so, I understand. He says, where are we going for breakfast? And I said, he said, is it, is it, is it, a, is it a greasy spunk, greasy, greasy, what, greasy? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really bad calf, Lionel. And uh, I've never actually been there before. So, God bless, you know, I, I, I haven't actually been there. I looked through the window yesterday, Lionel. I thought it looked quite sexy. I thought it looks, you know, gritty. It's a good place to take a top man like you. He said, you're a top man, Duncan. I believe you. We'll be all right. Anyway, we, we, <laughs> he gets ready and stuff. And about quarter past eight, we get in my car. I don't know what Mercedes Sports and really 1960s thing. And we drive to this calf, right? And <laughs> I get out of the car and he's sitting there. And I said, I'll just go in and just see if there's a table because they're always busy, these cafes, aren't they? It's a Monday morning. So I walk in the calf. Yeah, I walk in the calf. And as he's, it's, it's uh, full of electricians, plumbers. And it's, it's quite sort of steamy in there because it's got neck curtains and stuff. And um, there's these two girls at the counter. And they've got their hair pinned back. And they look up at me. Yeah, mate. And the, the scene was... There's like 30, 40 mugs of tea and they've got a great big kettle, uh, teapot and they're pouring tea out across all these or spilling tea. You all right, mate? Yeah, yeah, we'll just sit over there. I said, look, I, I, could I just possibly get two Olympic breakfasts? Here's the money. Um, I just want to do some pictures. Is it all right to take photos in here? You do photos all you want. Go and sit over there, mate. Diane will come over and she'll take your order. I said, look, um, I'll only be here 15, 5, 10 minutes. I just want to do some photos. I've got someone in the car. Who you got in the car then, mate? I said, look, I've got a, um, a musician. Oh, yeah, mate. Oh, yeah, well, just go and get your musician, right? So I said, uh, yeah, well, I'd, I'd really appreciate it if the breakfast could be there in, in, and I could come back in, see they're there. I'll bring him in. We'll sit down, do the pictures. Look, mate. You either want to sit down, die and serves you, go and get your musician. Anyway, who you, who, you, who you got coming in then? Who you bringing in then? I said, well, um, I've got, um, I've got, <laughs> I said, I've got Lionel Richie in the car. And she went, you got Lionel Richie in the car? Okay, Brenda, <laughs> she's got Lionel Richie in the car I'm bringing in. Hey, Barry, 
<laughs> Barry, geezer's bringing Lionel. She goes, tell you what, what's this Beatles about? She goes, you go and get Lionel, bring him in, all right? You wanker, you know, that sort of thing. So I was just thinking, oh, fuck it. <laughs> so I, I go out to the car and Lionel, I open the door. He's got a Gucci coat on, Gucci pants, Gucci hair. You know, he's all, all glam, you know. He says, is it all right? He says, is there room? I said, there's I said, there's a table. But Lionel, I don't know what's going to happen. And it was, he, oh, I'll never forget. He opened that door and the place that a pin could... They looked up, they almost dropped the teapot. I said, he said, hi, girls, uh, where do I sit? <laughs> <laughs> and then we... And we... Um, and we... Uh, yeah, well, so we sat down, we got the, you know, got the breakfast, and then he starts chatting to some plumbers. And he's just, he's just a, a, a normal guy, you know, except he's Lionel Richie, isn't he? But there was a guy sitting about three tables away, an old boy, and he had a cap on, and he was, had a bowl of chips, and he was sucking them, because he had no teeth, right? And I thought, oh, that'd be good. good. Lionel said, who's that over there? And I said, oh, I don't know. He said, uh, I said, I'll, I'll go and talk to him. So I went over and just said hello. I said, oh, I like your cap, I don't know. Do you like sucking chips? I said, yeah, I will come here every morning, every chip. <laughs> so, I said, so I said something along the lines of, I said, look, I've got a musician over there. I just love to, he could just have a chat. Oh, yeah, I'll bring him over. I'll, I'll sit down here. Who's that then? I said, uh, well, it's a chap called Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie was stuck on you. He said, oh, oh my wife. Yeah, yeah. And then next minute, they're both having a conversation, and I and I and I'm taking pictures all the time. Again, not camera. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, and then, and we had the most. Then Lionel went behind the counter, made a bacon roll, and it was just all so sort of normal but surreal. And then we left there, and then I took Lionel on a bus on the tube. We went all around London. We went for lunch, had a pie and mash. You know what I mean? And it was just the quirkiest day out. And then, you know, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, and I was photographing all day, and at the end of the day, he said, you know, Duncan, that was a day like no other. I, I've had such a laugh. He says, do you want to stay in a hotel tonight? So I ended up staying in the suite, you know, with Lionel, telling me stories. Then we went out, and then he said, why don't you come with us to, to Berlin, you know, uh, Tuesday? So then, I, then I'm on a plane to Berlin with Lionel and that, and then we ended up... You know, going out with Boris Becker and we got a takeaway. Do you know what I mean? It just. But what 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 my I think why I, uh, I was telling you this story is uh, is that you can make things happen sometimes yeah. by doing it. Yeah. D- don't be afraid to ask in life. So many people don't get to do all the things they want. They they never ask, and it's don't be afraid of rejections. Like J.K. Rowling, Stephen King, they had they put they were always refused. You know, they put their books in. Uh, yeah. No, the answer's no. Computer says no. But I guess if I hadn't had the balls just to sort of jokingly say, yeah, let's go take Lionel Rich out for a fry up. It was a silly idea, but it, it, worked, it worked. You know what I mean? And it worked. And I've done lots of other stuff like that. And then it's, yeah, so folks, if you're listening um, and you've got a dream, you want to do something, just try and do it or just ask. Um, be brave because you can only you can only say no and then you're no worse off, are you? It's, if you didn't ask, you didn't know. And, that's it's, uh, an example to us all, and I think, I think Duncan, there's some. We've mm. got a lot more we could talk about, and I think that if I want to talk to you, yeah, if, if Barry, you, I'm yeah, only joking. If, if you do, I realise you're very selective in your <laughs> in your choices. <laughs> no. the, 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 I could ask you so many questions about well, those we will. points. Um, so yeah. let's leave it there for now. Yeah, because I want I want the people out there to to get a taste of what oh, lies ahead. Yeah, that's and, right. So, so, folks, don't be afraid to ask. All of you, if there is anyone listening, you four people, think of anyone you'd like to meet or something you'd like to do and ask. Don't go, and also, don't go through all the people at the bottom. If you want to meet someone astonishing, hand write them a letter and put some biscuits, posh biscuits. Do something really different and do a packet with all handwriting because no one gets anything through the post anymore. It's so powerful to handwrite someone a packet with stuff in it. Yeah. It is. Tip for today from Duncan. Yeah, Thank you late. very much, Duncan. Bye. Brilliant. <laughs> well, that's just a taster, and I hope it's whetted your appetite. Honestly, I think you'll be doing yourself a favour if you check out Duncan Rabin. That's R-A-B-A-N. Uh, I just Googled Duncan Rabin and just say hello, and you get loads of stuff that comes up. 
I'm not a great fan or user of Facebook, but for this, I'd say it's really worth going there. And there's more where this came from. I'll be talking to Duncan again soon, I hope, and we'll maybe turn the conversation into something where we can draw out more of those ideas to help you get a better handle on life. One thing I would say, if you take nothing else away from this quick discussion we've had, he and I have had, at least check him out and at least follow his Just Say Hello campaign and the new campaign is launching, which is about kindness. I really wish Duncan luck. I'm looking forward to talking to him again. And I wish you luck. And thank you very much. This is Barry Wimbolt saying goodbye for now and over and out. <laughs>